Hey guys, have you ever wanted to change your BTX power output while flying the drone using your controller? Yeah, me too. So this summer I was searching all over Google, YouTube, every form, but I was not finding anywhere how to control the actual milliwatt output from your controller. Before we get into it, let's just talk about the other ways that you would change your VTX power. The first one is actually to use the board, these two buttons on here. This is really just inconvenient. You're clearly not gonna do it in flight, so therefore it's crap. Another way, for example, is to use the OSD inside of your goggles. You can actually program this so you can change the channel and the VTX power outputs by using your transmitter and looking through your goggles. The problem with this is you cannot do this during flight, so you have to do it when you're on the ground anyway. Crap. Third way, and by far the best way, using your transmitter to control the VTX power output while you're flying. Amazing. I like to use this switch right here. 25 milliwatt, 200 milliwatt, 400 milliwatt, 800 milliwatt. Let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing we do is scroll down to the CLI tab and type in VTX. What you see is 10 different lines of settings and a bunch of numbers. The first two numbers in this line are related to the channel number on your transmitter. The next three numbers are related to the power level, which is defined in the video transmitter tab, and these last two larger numbers define the position of the switch that you're going to be using. Okay, we'll head back to the main screen and jump down to the receiver tab. Here you'll see all of the channels associated with your transmitter, and we're going to pick a switch. I like to use the slider switch on the right side of the controller because it's easy to access when you're flying and also allows for a large range of movement. Now we need to figure out which channel this slider switch is on. So we have to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. It's channel 8. Okay, now we're going to pop back over to the CLI tab, type in VTX, and we're going to copy this first line here so we can change the numbers to match our current settings. Uh, the second number here is currently a 9. It's probably a 0 on your screen if you've never done this before. Uh, we're going to change that to 7, and the reason is is because we're using channel 8. It's always one less for some reason, so for example, if you're using channel 10, you'd be using a 9 here. Uh, the next three numbers are 0, 0, 1, and that's just saying this is the first setting. And for the first setting, we're going to be using the switch range of 950 to 1150. Uh, these numbers you can play with a little bit depending on feel. Uh, I've used 950, which is below 1000, so it's technically below the bottom of the switch marker, but I just want to make sure it's at the true bottom. Uh, after you've done the first one, you just click enter, then you move on to the second, third, and fourth. In my case, I did four different power settings, and you kind of repeat the steps until you are finished. Uh, and again, with the switch ranges, you kind of just have to figure out where on your controller you want these ranges to pop in. And again, that depends on how many settings you are going to be setting up. Uh, after you've completed it all, the super important step is you want to remember to type save and enter, at which point Betaflight will actually reset, and you should be good to go. So then we will have to go ahead and test this to see if it worked. Okay, so I got my controller right here, and I actually have a pineo switch set up on here that controls the power of the VTX on and off, so I'm going to go ahead and switch that up to turn it on. That's a pretty nice feature to have, and let's take a look in the goggles to see where we're at. So if you go ahead and look down here at my fingers, you'll see that I'm moving the switch up, and if you look to the top right, you'll see 200, 400, 800, back down to 25, it works. Now increasing power not only helps with range, but improves penetration quite a bit. In this shot, my plane is on the top floor of my house, and I am downstairs with the goggles. You can see at 25 milliwatt, I had no signal. At 200, I got a little bit better. 400, it's almost perfect, and 800, it's crystal clear. Now this is really beneficial if you're flying around trees or bushes and you start to lose video signal. You can go ahead and just crank up the power, and it will give you your video resolution back. Okay guys, well that about wraps up the video. I hope this was helpful. This VTX power switch is my favorite modification I've done since I started in FPV, but I'll tell you, if you really want to improve your video quality, 
clarity, signal, penetration, range, all that good stuff. It's all about receivers and antennas. And I'm gonna be doing an episode coming up where I'm gonna be comparing different receivers and antenna combinations to get the best range, penetration, and quality. I have a couple patch antennas we'll be looking at, this Amaway, this patch antenna here, got another little patch antenna here. This helicoil antenna I actually made for free. Uh, it's made from a tin can, and it's surprisingly awesome. And also we'll be talking about different types of goggles. This Emacs pair of box goggles. I've got this older pair of Fat Sharks here, and my HDOs that are absolutely awesome, and how they really affect range and penetration. But anyway, stay tuned for that, and until next time, guys, Pete the Pilot, signing out.